Hello, and welcome to my predictions for 2024. I'm Phyllis King. So let's get into it. You know, I like to name the energy patterns because it makes it easier for us to understand kind of the tenor of what we can experience. 2024 has the feeling of work hard and play hard. And so whether that is your motto or not, I think where you're gonna have to really watch the flow of energy and pace yourself because the current is moving rapidly. If you felt 23, 2023 went quickly, 2024 is going to go even more quickly. And that's just a byproduct of how much energy, i.e. activity, thoughts, feelings, emotions seem to be crammed into the space. So all of us are going to feel this. Now, a couple features. If you felt 2023 was heavy and somewhat sluggish, and let's just say, um, say on a one to 10 scale, it was a five. And eh, not bad, not great. 2024 will feel more like a seven. So even though there's some hard stuff that we'll all experience, overall, we're going to make a lot of progress and feel much better about the year. So this is the year. I'm not, this is the year, January 1. If you want to start a business, start it. If you want to go back to school, go back to school. If you want to get a new job, get a new job. If you want to get into a relationship, do it. If you want to get out of one, do that as well. This is such a great year for new beginnings, pioneering, really making those significant changes in your life uh, better than any year that I can remember in recent in recent memory, okay? So it's a great year for change, all right? Great year for new beginnings. We're all going to feel this energy, so the best thing you can do, plant your feet, set your intention, and hang on for the ride. Because there's another feature that comes into 2024, which is the unexpected. So here's the thing, and this can work for the positive and the negative. So we're cruising along, we're making things happen, we feel like we're in control and just really off to the races and then suddenly something intervenes to turn direction or to draw a conclusion. Now, for the good, this means it will scoot us right along and make something happen that's even better than what we expected. On the other side of that polarity, it might turn our direction in a way that's like, hey, I didn't want that. But that's a feature of this year. So all the more reason, you know, I love the phrase, be the buoy in the ocean. We want life to carry us and not resist it. So I think we're going to see three or four of these features throughout the year where we're in a momentum and things are going along. And then suddenly out of nowhere, these oddities come, you know, my spiritual point of view on this is that we're moving into a very humanitarian era on the planet and there's planet planetary global influences that are beyond our control and we get swept up into them and those, so these adjustments take place that's my point of view about it so 2024 is a great year for new beginnings take start and do it january 1 because you're going to start to feel the electricity of this energy as early as the last week of december okay all right, so let's get into U.S. economy, which often affects global economy as well. Uh, and we partner with China as also a global economy that is dominant. And both look good, matter of fact. But in the U.S., I think one of the plaguing issues recently has been inflation. So we will definitely see progress in the area of inflation, but it's going to be modest. It will be steady, but it will be modest. And the same will be true with the whole interest rate challenge in the United States, which is directly tying to lending and the housing market. So we'll begin to see modest reductions in inflation uh, start in the first quarter of 2024. And the interest rate situation, those will reduce slightly. But we don't, this is the one area of the energy which is very snail-like. And it will take the better part of the year 
for these areas to really come into a balance that consumers can feel really good about. But as long as we're seeing progress, it's I guess it's just psychological, but I think consumers will feel better and we'll see movement in the economy uh, in ways we didn't in 2024. But the housing market remains pretty darn challenging in general, comparatively speaking. But as we end out the year, I think we'll see improvements in general. And, you know, I don't like to be really cynical, but I just find it interesting that in an election year, things start to get on track. Isn't that something? Speaking of election year, let's talk about the next president in the United States. And let me just say, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just here interpreting the energy. That's all I do. Okay. So what I do see is the president, the current president, Joe Biden, will return for a second term. And I have some things to say about that. But let me address why I don't think Donald Trump will get into office a second time. Uh, and the thing is, is um, when I'm looking at his energy, there's a heaviness and sort of, I would, the best way I can say it is sort of carrying too much baggage, too much heavy energy to elevate. And so in the energy of game of how we ascend, he just can't quite get to the vibratory level that he did previously for a variety of reasons. Maybe it's his legal issues, maybe it's personal issues. I, I can't really say, I'm not seeing specifically why, or maybe it's all of it. But when I, every time I put him in the White House, he cannot stay. So I'm, I think we'll see that resolved throughout the year. Now, what's also interesting about that energy is that I feel like he almost doesn't want to do it. I think he loves his supporters and really wants to do it on behalf of them. Um, but it's not his personal desire any longer, which is interesting to me. So um, we'll see how it all plays out throughout the year. Now, when returning to Joe Biden, what's interesting about his presidency is I don't think he's making it through the entire presidency, whether it's a health challenge or something more significant. As I see the last couple of years of the presidency, he's not going to be a big part of it. So if he is still in office, we're going to see his cabinet and staff members doing much of the work. But I don't I think it's going to be more significant than that, that we'll see a change of power, a passing down to while he is in office. So there is a lot going on in American politics. Uh, pretty significant. But overall, I think the other piece that's weighing against Donald Trump and supporting Joe Biden is this sort of psychological and emotional weariness of the country that really uh, got fueled by the pandemic of 2020. And even though people want change, they they don't. You know, even positive change can be so exhausting. Uh, and this year in particular, with the energy so fast moving, I think just energetically, psychologically, people are going to opt for the status quo and just give it another get get let him finish out his second term and i think because what i said a minute ago it's always funny how in election years suddenly magically the economy starts to improve gas prices come down just magic right anyhow i try not to be cynical but it came out a little bit okay so that's my prediction don't shoot the messenger and now let's move on okay so let's now dive into um healthcare and technology, and I'm kind of doing them together because they are influenced heavily by the same thing, which is AI. Now, this is a technology, we'll call it, that is, um, it's here to stay, and it is going to change our lives in ways I don't think many of us can even fathom. It's wonderful, it's a little bit scary, but it is a thing, and we're really going to see that coming into our lives in a big way in technology and how it affects healthcare. I see that in healthcare, as a, they're really trying to serve patients better because we're not doing a great job of that, and we're employing AI to do that through whether it's telehealth or um, sources outside of telehealth and um, 
offices to keep track of our patients or let patients keep track of themselves and get real-time feedback. And it even travels into the mental health arena where it's sensing people's moods and how they're doing. As I mean, there's HIPAA things that could be going on here as well. You have to consent, but it's like, so your practitioner can really monitor you or see, see how you're actually doing. So there is a lot of interesting ways this is going to blend into our life. But I also see devices in the healthcare industry being given out in some way. I mean, now, you know, like if you have some type of a heart condition, they can or they will um, you can test it from afar with various tools. That's we'll just leave it at that. But AI is going to take it up, a not, you know, 10 notches in the kind of information that we can transmit to our providers and how they interpret that. And so that's opening up an entire new landscape to address healthcare issues and challenges and accessibility in general. And we'll have to see how we like that. We're gonna have to see how it actually works and how we feel about it. It's, it's somewhat impersonal, but AI feels so personal and human, even though it isn't, it's really bizarre. So we'll see how we like that in 24, but it's really going to become a prol proliferation around uh, health and in technology. And technology, everybody's just going to want in on it. And so there's a big demand from businesses wanting technology to support their business ventures. And it's sort of like the wild, wild west, and it's a new toy. Everybody wants in on it. Everybody wants a piece. Tell me how to get, tell me how to do it. How can this influence my bottom line? And I think it can massively benefit in many ways. But again, there's so many issues around it. So I think it's just everything AI and healthcare and in technology. And this transfers over to, though, I do see a shift in the culture for specifically software engineers that there is a high demand. It tends to be an environment which is very stressful, that people can be paid well, but not necessarily treated well. And I think the culture of how do I retain these valuable creative people who are influencing our culture so much, how do I make it uh, desirable for them to stay in my company and be happy, et cetera. And so we're going to see developers have a lot more influence. Um, and this is the beginning of a change of culture of how we treat that industry. So that's interesting to me as well. Okay, uh, let's move into something that's a little more challenging. Let's talk about some of the natural disasters I'm feeling that are going to be more potent. We have them every year, but some isolate in certain parts of the country. What's interesting to me is volcanoes. It's like I'm feeling more volcano activity than ever before. And I think even last year we experienced that in Hawaii. Um, and But now I'm feeling a lot over in the Indonesian region. So that's interesting to me that volcanoes, it just seems like they're dormant forever until they aren't, right? I'm feeling that in that region. But then I'm feeling enormous flood activity in the Gulf of Mexico and Florida next year. I know we get hurricanes and things down there, but the flooding seems really excessive and there is a lot of devastation and potentially loss of life. And that feels greater than is typical. I'm also feeling a lot of flooding activity in Brazil and in India and in Vietnam. So there's a lot of water craziness going on around the globe next year. We always have flooding, of course, in various regions, but it feels significant in these particular areas. Of course, there's going to be plenty of quakes on the West Coast area, but I'm feeling a larger quake in between the regions of San Francisco and Los Angeles, not in the metropolitan area, but a significant seismic event between those regions, right smack dab in the middle. The good news is it's not as heavily populated. So, I mean, it, the Earth continues to let us know who's in charge, right? You can't, you can't trump Mother Nature, right? Okay, so the next thing we want to look at is um, the difficulty with some wars going on on the globe right now. Let's first look at the Russian-Ukraine conflict. And let's start by saying the energy is already out of that. 
that conflict does it mean why is it still going if the energy is still in it because will and determination can kind of extend things for a short period of time or a longer period of time but not indefinitely it's kind of like when i see people getting ready to transition from the physical to non-physical that uh, if they're stubborn and have a strong will, they can go a little longer, but you can't, again, you can't outdo Mother Nature and the life cycle of a specific uh, life or event. So, uh, and there's a lot of wills going on in this, a lot of ego going on in that venture. But what's uh, my next prediction is for May 2024 for this thing to really begin to resolve, if not completely resolve, and why? There is no more support for it. And the money's going to dry up and we're going to really get the hard press from diplomatic solutions to bring it to a close. And you know who's going to be a good player in that? China. China is going to be the big diplomat that brings us to resolution. The U.S. will be unable to fund for various reasons. The money will not be flowing. Uh, China will step in to help on that end and will finally, finally, see that come to a close. On the other side, we're looking at this very painful and emotional situation with Israel and Hamas. And that situation has a completely different consciousness to it. Not that there aren't egos involved, but that's more just a history of animosity and grievance and ideological differences. So it's not so much, it is about territory, but it's also not. But both these parties know this is a short conflict. They already know at the beginning, it was not going to be years. Um, this piece of the conflict, this conflict is not going away anytime soon, but this portion of the conflict will come to a resolution no later than February. And this will mostly come about through diplomacy. And I see four or five different countries taking part in that. Not only the United States, but Jordan and Egypt. And so we're going to see that come to pass um, again. It'll, if it's not already done by February of, of 24, the resolution process will begin. And just know um, that region will continue to be volatile. All right, which is sad, but uh, we can focus on humanitarian solutions and and stopping the immediate bloodshed and all of that that's so painful for all of us to watch. Okay, so now that we've got through all the challenging and hard stuff, let's end with some fun stuff and look at the Oscars. I love to do the Oscars every year. I don't know why. I'm not even a movie person or a Hollywood person, but, you know, I love playing this game with them. So, um, and here's the thing. As which happens with most years, most of the time, I don't know the movies. I don't even know the actors. Uh, but I look at the energy of the movies or the actors, and whoever is shining the brightest is who I predict. So this year... Um, What's interesting is Hollywood itself is asking for freshness in the energy. They want new. They want people to be engaged with the process, and they don't want the same old, same old. So even some of the existing actors who've probably won before, um, it's kind of they might be what they might be deserving, but it, they're kind of like getting pushed to the side because there's a demand for fresh energy. So in terms of the best actor, I need to put my glasses on because. I um, have to read their names. There is a man named Cillian Murphy, and he was in this movie called Oppenheimer. I don't know him and I don't know the movie, but his energy is really powerful. When I put him up to everybody else, he's standing at the front of the line. So I'm giving this really an 80% that this man is the one who's going to win. I don't really even know what the movie's about, but his energy is really incredible. Now, if this Cillian Murphy does not win, someone else whose energy is crazy good, is this guy named Coleman Domingo. And he's been in a movie called Rustin. I don't know, never heard of it. Anyhow, his energy is off the charts. Now, if he doesn't slide into the spot, it's only a matter of time. This guy is up and coming. He's amazing. I just love this person's energy. Never seen a picture of him, never seen him, nothing. But his energy, mwah, it's really remarkable. 
Now, as we get into the best actress category, this is where there's really some enthusiasm and desire, not only from the industry, on it, but the public, um, because the person who I feel is the front runner because of her energy is a woman named Lily Gladstone. And she was in a movie called Killers of the Moon. Um, never seen the movie, don't know her, but there's something about her energy, which is really deep and creative and interesting. And it just is grounded. So there's something about her. I really, really like to get the Oscar. Now, the flip side of this is there's huge public sentiment for her her challenger, I'm calling it, which is someone I do know, which is Emma Stone. And I think even in her industry, there's a lot of people and her colleagues would love for her to win. They just they just love her, apparently. But I'm just getting there's a there's an emotional desire for Emma Stone to win. I'm not convinced she will, but if this Lily Gladstone person does not take the prize, I think she will. So I'm giving 80% to Cillian Murphy, and I'm giving about 65% to Lily Gladstone. So that should be um, a lot of fun. Um, anyhow, it should be a great year, 24. Compared to 23, I think we're all gonna like it better. All of us, I mean, with rare exception, everybody's gonna be able to elevate themselves and feel the benefits of manifestations in their lives and really seeing the needle move. I, I like it a lot. I mean, there's this element of unexpected kind of taking us places we may not wanna go or think we should be going, but go there, go with the flow because uh, it's sort of helping us whether we, we like it or not. But there's some of that unexpected stuff going on it's a powerful year um and so you know take advantage of it we don't always get this much energy to work with anyhow thank you for watching i look forward to your comments and questions uh and i'm phyllis king find me all over social media TikTok, instagram facebook you name it i'm there and of course my website phyllisking.com take care